The PlayStation Portal's arrived. Uh, this is, I think, one of the most weird feeling devices to me this year. There are aspects of this that I'm actually pretty excited about and then other things about it that I'm a little weirded out about. And now I can finally get my hands on it and try it out, see how it is. So I'm gonna go ahead and open this up. We'll do a rough little first setup. Uh, I am planning on doing a more thorough review. This one's I've actually spent more full time with it. So make sure you subscribe, you don't miss out on that. Uh, but let's go ahead and at least open it up and get it running. Uh, of course, Sony likes to do plain boxes inside of boxes. Oh wait, no, this is in parts. Uh, it's just a little packing, a little packing fluff. There we go. It's actually kind of a nicer, a lot of times they have like the very nondescript boxes. They'll still have the PlayStation logo, but it's kind of cool that it's in white on like a gray background. It's just a little different. All right. <laughs> it's a little goofy looking. I, I'm not, I don't want to hate on this thing because I actually think it is potentially kind of cool, even though I do also wish we had just a new full traditional handheld. Peel that. I will say just this immediate, like in the hand grip, uh, I really like the weight distribution on this. There is something a little weird about the fact that at first glance you're seeing that it's basically a DualSense controller that's been split apart. It had a screen shoved in the middle. But despite the fact that, you know, looks a little off, it actually has a really nice feeling as far as the weight goes. Like you can tell there's a screen in the middle. There's a little bit extra heft. Obviously it's heavier than a DualSense but not really as heavy or as dense feeling as I thought it would be. Uh, and I mean, it feels like I'm using a DualSense with my hands just farther apart. Uh, grips feel good, texturing in the plastic is nice. The build as far as materials go feels really premium, which I do appreciate. Now I'm also realizing that I wanna turn this on and try it out, but to set up the shot, I put our PlayStation behind me and this is a remote play only device. So I need a PlayStation hooked up to remote play it. Uh, so we'll be right back. Okay, my PS5 is now hooked up and ready to go. Uh, real quick before I turn this on, I just wanna go over everything that's on this controller because I was taking a look at it while we were getting that set up. Uh, obviously the PlayStation button along with the mic mute button used to be centered, which you can't really do with a screen in the middle. So they put those off to the sides here. Everything else is located roughly where they would normally be. Uh, on the top of the controller is where we have a power button along with what I believe would be the PlayStation link button. Something I can't make use of yet because I don't have any of the link accessories. Uh, the Explorer comes out. I think in early December, so that'll be the first one to get to try out with this. Volume buttons up top, and then you have an aux port on the bottom along with USB-C. I don't love the USB-C being, I mean, it's kind of a give or take. Top or bottom, there's always gonna be some situations where one is better than the other for, you know, where it's most convenient while you're playing and charging at the same time. So yeah, I guess it will make it prettier because even when it's charging, you're not gonna have a cable coming right at the top of it. Okay, so let's go ahead and turn this on. Uh, we do of course have our very in-depth directions that got sticky taped to the uh, packaging, but you know, hit the power button, turn it on. There you go. So there we go. Yeah, yeah, that's a long press for the initial startup. Just be here a second. Oh, there we go. Okay, English, United States. Uh, one thing to point out really quick is that this music is different. It's like a play on the PS5 background music. You can tell how they're like related, but it's its own stuff. And we need a system update right away. I uh, touched the screen without even thinking because it is a touch screen and I'm glad that worked. Which I'm curious how much you're really gonna, I mean, it's used for the touchpad replacement basically, but obviously the screen's a lot bigger than the touchpad is in the dual sense. So look, I'm gonna say something, it's a little weird. The music in this, it sounds like the PlayStation music, but it sounds like a Nintendo remix of it. So while we're waiting for this to update, because it's getting a little while still. I did realize there was something else in the box uh, hiding in what was the cover on the inside of it is what looks like cabling. So it doesn't have a charge brick, but it does come with a C to C cable. That's fairly short. I, I'm really mixed feelings on this. It, it already bothers me that they don't ship more cables when you buy like additional controllers. Like I kind of get that one a little bit though. It'd be really nice if this had its own charging brick just because it's a handheld and I'm not always going, like the point of this is that I may not be right next to my PS5. So I'm not gonna just plug it into my PS5 for charging. I'd like to plug it into like a wall for power and... My smoothie's ready. I ordered a smoothie before we shot this. I didn't anticipate updates taking as long as the smoothie order would. All right, we are back in business. Oh, yep, sign in, scan a QR code. Good to go, logged in. That was nice and simple. Connect to a PS5 to play. Pair your device with any PS5 you recently logged into. You can change which PS5 your device is paired with at any time. I now have to remember which model. Uh, okay, it's the most recent one. So yeah, that, that's the Slim. It'd be nice if the Slim had a different logo. Okay. 
There's like a, oh, cool. We have like a little swipe out menu. Oh, yep, so that symbol was for PlayStation Link, showing what PlayStation I'm attached to, brightness controls. All ready to go. Little, little opening animation. There we go. Ready to play. Play. All right, not the best looking signal right off the bat. I was playing a little control because I'm going between that and Alan Wake. Now, the thing with a remote play device like this that I've talked about every time we do stuff like phone remote play and all that kind of stuff is that the experience is gonna be heavily affected by what your internet support is and also how you have things set up. But okay, that's pretty smooth to start. When I very first connected the PlayStation, it did have a bit of a crunchy signal, but uh, this is looking a little clearer. Noticing some frame drops here and there. But okay, yeah, this one, the, the image quality is looking pretty good so far, uh, but can definitely see that the uh, frame rate freaks out a little bit. I am playing in performance mode too. And then we get max brightness, yeah. Oh man, when you go dark, it goes dark when you go all the way dark. Okay, so we'll have that there. Airplane mode, don't need to mess with that right now. Don't have a PlayStation Link headset to mess with. What's in settings, what does that do? So network, just, yep. Network settings, display and brightness. Controller, okay, so vibration intensity and trigger intensity, or trigger effect intensity. System, what do we got? Device information, reset options, updates, language settings. Okay, all the really basic standard stuff. So not a lot of fine-tuned control on the settings here, not that there would be much. I mean, again, this is a remote play device. It's focused on that. I will say that the comfort of the controller aspect is feeling really good for the buttons and shoulders. Reaching the menu buttons feels a little weird, like just having to reach over a PlayStation button. Not a big deal, because you shouldn't be hitting that very often until you're actually quitting a game. So I'm gonna dive into the controller demo for Astro's Playroom real quick, because one of the main pitches about this player versus other methods is that it is an actual full functional dual sense. Uh, so whereas you might lose certain things like the advanced haptics or the, uh, what's the term they use? for the triggers, adaptive triggers. Uh, so you might lose things like the haptics or adaptive triggers using other controller options while stream playing. Uh, that's all maintained on here. So, yep, I felt all those haptics right there. Yep, adaptive triggers, getting the same feedback there. Touchpad is now the touch screen. Oh, it's, oh, okay. So they put, the touch pads are now on either side next to the sticks. So that way, instead of having to like move your whole hand over, you just boop, quick with your thumb. That makes sense. Okay, that's actually a good, I didn't think about that. That's a good move. All right, we got motion sensor. We do have motion sensor. It's funny because it does look a little delayed compared to just a little bit. But yeah, that works. Haptics work too. I feel all those guys rolling around in there. Oh, there's no microphone on this. Mic is muted. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> Didn't even, I must have hit it earlier, just being like, oh, there's where that button is. Yeah, the display panel itself looks nice, like just the way the colors and everything are popping on this. I'm definitely noticing a little something with frame rates on this compared to the stream. I don't know if that's my Wi Fi messing with me right now, uh, or just the general communication between what frame rates being hit on the system and then what's hitting this display. The, the input latency is pretty low, at least right now. I mean, obviously that's the thing that can fluctuate depending on your environment and situation, how good the connection is, but I'm, ah, yeah, that's pretty tight. It's the kind of input delay where like, if you're using a TV and you didn't maximize the settings, you might notice in some games where timing is extremely important, you might notice it's a tiny bit behind, but just playing this casually, like that doesn't, yeah, that, that, that feels responsive. You can definitely tell that it's remote play just based on the relative inconsistency. Like there's just, it's one of those things where at least, I mean, given this is me just messing with this for this 10 minutes right now, but I have stretches where it feels really great, really snappy, image looks consistent. And then it's just like a moment, like either it hitches for a second, uh, the resolution takes a bump for like a moment. Again, the Wi-Fi here is really weird. Uh, so I do want to try this in a lot of other locations but it's 100% playable, but not necessarily uh, seamless. I ran right into that guy because I was talking and not paying attention to what I was doing in game. Uh, <laughs> um, other things about the display real quick, just looking at it while we've got an image going. Uh, 
the viewing angles on it are great, which isn't, it's not a massive necessity for a handheld because normally since it's a handheld, you're just holding it directly in front of you. Uh, but if you were trying to share this with some other people or have someone watch over your shoulder, uh, it's not like they're gonna suddenly have this like awful glare where they don't see anything. Yeah, the viewing angles on that are really nice actually. That's probably enough for me just at least getting this up and running and trying it. Um, I wanna test so many more games uh, in a lot of different environments. I wanna try this uh, doing remote play at home with my PS5 there. I wanna try remote playing this PS5 here at the office while I'm at home or I'm at somewhere else that has decent Wi-Fi, uh, because that is ultimately the thing that really defines, I think, how well this device works out, right? Is how it handles these varieties of situations. Because when all things are great, it's a solid package. I mean, the build quality here feels really nice. Uh, again, I find it to be extremely comfortable. It looks a little wacky, but honestly, when I look at this form factor and hold it, uh, compared to something like a Switch or even the Steam Deck, this feels a little more comfortable. Just the way the weight distribution is done and how it just feels like a more traditional, actual controller that I have my hands wrapped around. It's definitely not a traditional look, but it feels nice to use. So that's just some immediate first impressions on the PlayStation Portal. Again, I'm gonna spend a bunch more time with this thing and have a full review on its way. I do also have a full review of the PlayStation Slim coming out very quickly, so make sure to subscribe so you don't miss it on that. Hit the like button if you enjoyed this video. I got a lot more stuff coming. Also planning on covering the PlayStation Pulse Explorer when that launches in early December. Uh, till then, I'll see you guys later.